In this video, we're gonna discuss a couple of quick MCAT math tips, specifically how to convert SI prefixes into scientific notation and vice versa. To use these tricks, you'll need to know the scientific notation values for the SI prefixes. Let's review them now, starting with the small end of the SI scale. First up, we have PICO, which is represented as P and is equal to 10 to the negative 12. Next is NANO, represented as N and is equal to 10 to the negative nine. This one is easy to remember since N is the first letter of nine. Next up, we have micro, represented by this fancy symbol here, which is equal to 10 to the negative 6. I remember this one because to me, the micro symbol kind of looks like an upside down 6. From there, we have milli, represented by m or a sideways 3, which equals 10 to the negative 3. And lastly, centi, represented by c, which equals 10 to the negative 2. On the larger end of the scale, we have kilo, mega, giga, and tera. All these values are separated by three factors of 10 and are the common computer storage terms. Think kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, and terabyte to remember their order, with kilo being 10 to the 3, mega 10 to the 6, giga 10 to the 9, and tera 10 to the 12. Since all of these symbols just stand in for the math, we can quickly convert various values of different scale without having to use a conversion factor by replacing the SI letter with the math it stands for. For example, let's go ahead and look at these conversions here. First up, we have 70 micrometers. Micro is 10 to the negative six, so 70 micrometers would be 70 times 10 to the negative six meters. 70 nanometers would be 70 times 10 to the negative nine meters because nano is 10 to the negative nine. And 70 gigameters would end up being 70 times 10 to the nine since giga is equal to 10 to the nine. And 70 kilometers would be 70 times 10 to the three meters since kilo is 10 to the three. We can use this trick in practice problems in two major ways. One, to quickly convert everything into scientific notation before we get started with our calculation, and two, to avoid having to convert back into SI prefixes. For example, let's look at this question here. It asks us how many moles are contained in 0.5 milliliters of a 30 micromolar solution. To solve this problem, we're gonna start with the 30 micromolar since that would be micromoles per liter and we wanna solve for moles. We're gonna go ahead and convert that micro into 10 to the negative six. So this would end up being 30 times 10 to the negative six moles per liter. From there, we would multiply it by the 0 0.05 milliliters, which is the same thing as saying 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative three liters to cancel out the liter on the bottom. When looking at the math here, we can conquer and divide. We'll take the 30 and multiply it by 0.5 and that's just half of 30 or 15 and then deal with the scientific notation and that would be 10 to the negative six times 10 to the negative three. We would add those exponents and we'd be left with 10 to the negative nine. So in total, our answer would be 15 times 10 to the negative nine moles, which is answer choice A. In this case, the answer choices are pretty straightforward and we can quickly pick out the right answer. But what if the answer choices weren't listed in scientific notation and instead SI prefixes? When this happens, I prefer to convert my answer choices into scientific notation rather than my number into an SI prefix. It's typically easier and we don't have to worry about which SI prefix we pick. For example, here the question asks us to perform the same calculation as the last question, but has altered our answer choices. Before I blindly go and convert every single value into scientific notation, I'm gonna look for freebies. This is anything with the same integer value as well as the same scientific notation. With this in mind, let's convert answer choice D first since it has an integer value of 15. Since micro is 10 to the negative six, D would be equal to 15 times 10 to the negative six, which is too big. Now let's move on to A and C, which share the nano prefix or 10 to the negative nine. In both instances, neither of these values is equal to 15 times 10 to the negative nine, so they are both incorrect, leaving B as the correct answer. If we wanted to be doubly sure that this was the correct answer, then we could convert this answer choice into scientific notation as well and make sure it's the same. To do this, we would end up taking the 0.015 micromoles and converting that into 0.015 times 10 to the negative six moles since micro is going to be 10 to the negative six. From there, we'll move our decimal till we get to 15. That would be moving the decimal three times to the right. Since we've made our 0 0.015 number bigger by turning it into 15, the exponent is gonna have to compensate by getting smaller by three decimal points. In that case, the exponent would get more negative and become 10 to the negative nine. And here we can see that this is equal to 15 times 10 to the negative nine, which is what we calculated. Once you get the hang of the conversions, you can usually eliminate answer choices simply by sight, rather than needing to go through and convert each answer choice one by one. So far, we've avoided converting scientific notation into SI prefixes, but what if you absolutely need to do so? 
For example, what if we wanted to convert micrometer to kilometer or the other way around? For this, we can use the inverse trick. The trick has two steps. First, convert the original value into base units without an SI prefix, then add in the SI prefix you want and multiply your value by that SI value's inverse. Since we've already looked at how to replace SI prefixes with scientific notation, let's spend a little bit of time focusing on the second step of this trick and also discuss why this technique works. Here we want to convert 50 meters into kilometers. To do this, we're going to go ahead and add in our kilo and then figure out what the scientific notation for kilo is. It's 10 to the 3. Now we'll multiply by the inverse of that, which is 10 to the negative 3. So to convert from meters to kilometers, it would be 50 times 10 to the negative 3 kilometers. You could then go and simplify the math down a little bit if you really wanted to, but in a lot of cases, you won't need to. Now, why did this work? Well, let's go ahead and reconvert out that kilo back into scientific notation and see what we'd have. That would be 50 times 10 to the negative 3 times 10 to the 3 meters. The 10 to the negative 3 and 10 to the 3 would cancel, and we'd be left with 50 meters again. So what we've really done here is multiply by 1 in a fancy way that adds in an SI prefix. Now that we've seen how that second step works, let's look at two more examples starting from the very beginning. Let's say that we wanted to convert 70 micrometers into kilometers. So first, we're going to go ahead and get this down to the base units of meters. That would simply be replacing the micro with 10 to the negative 6. So this would be 70 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Now from there, we're going to add in our SI prefix and multiply by the inverse. That would end up with 70 times 10 to the negative 6 times 10 to the negative 3 kilometers, since 10 to the negative 3 is the inverse of kilo, which is 10 to the 3. Now we'll condense that down. That would be 70 times 10 to the negative 9 kilometers is equal to 70 micrometers. Now let's look at this doing in reverse, going from 70 kilometers into micrometers. Again, we're going to first start by getting rid of the kilo and getting down to the base units of just meters. That would be 70 times 10 to the 3 meters, replacing the kilo with the 10 to the 3. Now let's use the inverse trick. We want a micrometer, so we're going to go ahead and throw the micro in. Micro is 10 to the negative 6. We're going to be multiplying by the inverse, which is 10 to the 6. So in total, we would have 70 times 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 6. And if we condense that down, that would be 70 times 10 to the 9. Okay, great, but how might this come up in the context of the exam? You could use this trick instead of converting your answer choices into scientific notation, as we did before, if you find that easier. Additionally, we can use this for calculations that require a certain unit. The most obvious example of this is a force calculation. Since your mass has to be in kilograms, you might need to convert from some other measure of mass to kg before finding the force. Let's look at an example of that. In this question, we're asked, what force will a 5 milligram ball exert on the ground due to gravity? In order to calculate this out, we're going to have to convert that milligrams into kg before we plug this into the equation F equals ma. To do this, we'll use the inverse trick. So first, we're going to start with our milligrams and get it into grams. That would be 5 times 10 to the negative 3 grams, replacing the milli with 10 to the negative 3. Now we'll use the inverse trick. A kilo is 10 to the 3, so we're going to multiply by the, the inverse here, and that would be 10 to the negative 3. So in total, we'll have 5 times 10 to the negative 3 times 10 to the negative 3 kilograms, or 5 times 10 to the negative 6 kilograms. Now we'll multiply this by 10, since that's the acceleration due to gravity, and that will give us the force. In total, that would be 50 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. In this instance, since micro is 10 to the negative 6, and that's what the answer choices are in, we can simply convert that 10 to the negative 6 back into micro and find our correct answer. So here, it would be C, since we're looking for 50 micronewtons. Before we wrap up and summarize what we've learned today, I want to go over one more SI prefix concept. What happens when we cube or square an SI prefix value? For example, what does 1 centimeter cubed equal in meter cubed? A lot of people would immediately say, oh, it's 10 to the negative 2 meters cubed, and this would be wrong. To see why, let's think about a cube with a volume of 1 centimeter cubed. Each side is 1 centimeter long, or 1 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. To get the volume of this cube in meters, we can simply multiply each side together, which would end up being 10 to the negative 2 meters times 10 to the negative 2 meters times 10 to the negative 2 meters, or 10 to the negative 6 meters cubed. Here, we not only cube the meters, but the semi value too. This means that when we see an SI prefix value associated with a squared or a cubed value, we need to treat that exponent as applying to the prefix. So another way of saying one centimeter cubed is one centi cubed times meter cubed, which is equivalent to 10 to the negative six meters cubed. Now let's see how this concept would show up in an MCAT style question. Here we're asked, what is the mass of a four liter stone ball if the density of the ball is three grams per centimeter cubed? Note, one liter equals 10 to the negative three meters cubed. Let's begin by setting this problem up. We want to solve for grams, so we're going to start there. We'll begin by putting three grams over the centimeters cubed value, and now we need to work through our units and get to, we just have grams isolated. 
So we can do this by putting the meters cubed over liters and then multiplying by liters. But we can't cancel out centimeters cubed with meters cubed, so we're going to have to convert the centimeters cubed into meters cubed. Remember, that means that the centi value is going to be cubed. So 10 to the negative 2 to the third is the same thing as saying 10 to the negative 6. So in total, what we'd have is 3 grams over 10 to the negative 6 meters cubed times 10 to negative 3 meters cubed all over 1 liter times 4 liters. Now we can go through and simplify this down and do the math. Let's start by doing 3 times 4, and that would be 12. Now we'll deal with our tens. Now, I hate exponent division, so I'm going to avoid exponent division by bringing that 10 to the negative 6 up from the denominator to the numerator by flipping its sign. So in total, I would have 10 to the negative 3 times 10 to the 6, or in total, 12 times 10 to the 3 grams. From here, we can go ahead and use the tricks that we talked about before to pick our answer. I'm going to start by looking for freebies. Since we're already in grams, I'll just see if any of these match the gram values. It doesn't match A, it doesn't match B. Both of these are way too small. I know that 10 to the 3 is kilo, so I'm looking for an answer that's 12 kilograms or answer choice D. To summarize, we learned how to quickly convert from SI units into scientific notation by replacing the SI prefix with the math that the prefix represents. We can use this when setting up our calculations, as well as when looking for the correct answer choice. We can also convert from scientific notation into SI units via the inverse trick. To use this trick, you'll need to first convert your original value into base units, then add in the SI prefix you want, and multiply by the SI values inverse. Lastly, we discussed how squaring and cubing needs to be applied to SI prefixes that are associated with the cubed or squared value. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more MCAT tips and tricks. And if you want to support the channel and help me make more MCAT videos, consider joining my Patreon by clicking on the link in the video's description below.